Hello and welcome to this video series about uh, Chapter 7. Chapter 7 Demand Forecasting in a Supply Chain. My name is Frank Evers. I am lecturer in Industrial Engineering and Management in the Hogeschool Winnezijn. Um, for this uh, chapter, our learning objectives are fourfold. We would like to uh, learn in this chapter uh, to understand the role of forecasting in both uh, an enterprise and the whole supply chain. Um, in this, we focus on the supply chain itself and not so much on uh, the enterprise because um, we focus on the whole series of enterprises within the supply chain. Um, the second one, identify components of a demand forecast. In other words, what do we need in order to uh, come up with a forecast for demand over a series of time? The third one, forecast demand in a supply chain given historic demand data using time series methodologies. Uh, this is the uh, most of the times the hardest uh, part of this chapter as we're using uh, different models for, um, uh, for coming up with, an, uh, with a forecast. The last one is analyze demand forecast to estimate forecast error. This is a very important part as we uh, construct, can construct multiple uh, types of uh, forecast with multiple types of uh, uh, forecasted demand, we have to know what type of uh, methodology is best for your supply chain, for your company. And that's what we do in the uh, fourth learning objective, to analyze what is the best uh, methodology to use with uh, your company. But first, the role of um, forecasting in a supply chain. Uh, forecasting is a very important part of uh, supply chain management. And it's the, the, um, the, basic the basis for all planning decisions in the supply chain. Uh, is it for capacity? Is it for uh, workforce? Is it for overtime? Uh, stock out, um, you name it, it's all related to this chapter. Um, and so this chapter, chapter 7, is a very important chapter in the book of supply chain management of uh, Chopra we use. Um, this one, uh, this chapter is used for both the push and the pull processes within the, um, uh, within the supply chain. Uh, please recall uh, chapter one. In chapter one, we talked about the push-pull boundary. Um, we start with the um, supplier, then the manufacturer, distributor, retailer, and consumer. And somewhere along that uh, chain of five stages, there is the push-pull boundary. And the push-pull boundary, um, uh, most of the times, the inventory build-up uh, takes place. Um, please recall chapter one. If you got uh, trouble with that, please uh, relate to that uh, chapter. And uh, as uh, mentioned earlier, all, chap all decisions within, the, um, uh, within forecasting are interrelated. Um, is it for all the variables we use? In, um, in forecasting. Um, the characteristics of, um, of forecasting is uh, no different from the characteristics from forecasting in the supply chain itself. It says that um, a forecast has an, uh, ha always has an, uh, a forecast error and a random component uh, this random component tends to increase if you are um, forecasting on a short time basis and tends to increase if you um, uh, do it for a short, uh, on short notice. That's related 
to the second one. Uh, Long-term forecasts are usually less accurate than short-term forecasts as the random component is uh, less and you're more able to focus on the systemic uh, component of your forecast. Um, aggregate forecasts are more um, are more reliable than less aggregate uh, forecast. Uh, this is what we're also uh, crossing in uh, chapter 8. And uh, in the way that aggregate uh, forecasts are uh, more accurate as we work not only on stock keeping units, but we also work with products and product families especially. And uh, by increasing the aggregate level, we increase the, um, the accuracy of the forecast itself. And in general, the farther up the supply chain accompanies, the greater the distortion of information it receives. As information comes from the consumer all the way to the uh, retailer, distributor, manufacturer to the supplier, when you are farther up the uh, supply chain, the uh, information will get distorted along the way. And it's the role of the supply chain manager to decrease that uh, information distortion to increase the probability that the uh, forecast is accurate. Uh, what do we need for uh, establishing an, a forecast, the components we need are a past demand, our lead time for product uh, replenishment. Uh, this is very important as, um, as planning, uh, as, no, as forecasting always needs to have a, a larger uh, time series as the uh, lead time is. If you're uh, focusing on a shorter lead time as the production, uh, uh, as the product uh, 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 replenishment is, the, uh, the forecast does not have any need as you cannot replenish your goods anymore. So that's a very important component. And as, as you are able to decrease the, um, uh, the lead time, you uh, you are increasing the probability that you can focus on short-term uh, 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 forecast and in increasing your short-term forecast you also increase the accuracy in that forecast. So uh, decreasing your lead time will increase the accuracy in your forecast. This is a very important, um, a very important uh, task of a supply chain manager. Um, you need to um, uh, take into account plan advertised or marketing efforts and also planned uh, price discounts as demand could go up as uh, prices uh, uh, decrease. Um, that has uh, to do with the price elasticity of your, uh, of your demand. Uh, the state of the economy you have to take into account and as last one, the action the competitors are taking if they are um, decreasing or increasing the price the, that could have an influence on the uh, demand and on the demand forecast for your product or your product family. Um, in a forecast, we have four, um, uh, uh, um, four types of forecast. The first one is qualitative. So qualitative is uh, primarily beige, based on uh, judgment um, and the judgment can come from, for example, um, the board of, uh, of directives, the uh, CEO, uh, the CMO. Uh, it can come from multiple uh, uh, 
functions in, in your organization, only it is not quantitative. So it's uh, based mainly on guessing. The second one is uh, time series. On time series, we focus on, in this uh, chapter, we focus on historical uh, data and based on that historical data, including maybe a trend or a season, season-based uh, variability in the demand, we come up with, an, uh, with a demand forecast. Uh, the third one is Coswell, uh, the relation between demand and some other factor. Um, that could be the case and you have to interrelate to some, uh, some factors relating to your demand. The last one is simulation. There is simulation uh, software available on uh, uh, publicly available and you can use that simulation software. As mentioned earlier, in this chapter we focus on time series. And um, as we are focusing on that one, um, we, are, um, we are having the uh, systematic uh, component. And the systematic uh, component uh, has uh, three, uh, consists of three parts. The first part is the level. The second one is the trend, the last one is seasonability. The level is the starting point. That's the starting point at which you start with uh, forecasting. The trend can be up or down. As, um, as demand rises, increases or decreases. And as the general trend is up, you still can have a uh, seasonality. For example, that in, uh, in summer the sales of, for example, ice cream is higher as in winter. So there you see a seasonality. But the trend for ice creams is going up. There is, um, uh, uh, sell, uh, the, there is an increase in demand for ice cream and that increase also has a seasonality in it. So we got a level, that's the starting point. We got a trend, the trend is up or down. And in that trend we also got season, uh, season, seasonality. Sorry. We always focus on the systemic component. We never focus on the random component. The random component is um, hopefully, if we did everything uh, well, uh, please recall learning objective number four, is, uh, uh, comes forth in our um, uh, forecast error. As the forecast error, is the difference between demand and the, sorry between the uh, forecast and the actual demand? Um, when we are um, uh, embarking on an, um, on uh, uh, on demand forecasting, we got a basic approach. The basic approach consists out of five steps. Those five steps are the first, understand the objective of forecasting. Um, we did that in uh, earlier, this, uh, earlier this video. The second one is integrate demand planning and forecasting throughout the supply chain. Cross that. Also, the third one is identify major factors that influence demand forecast. Uh, we talked about uh, price, increase, decrease, competitor, and so forth and so on. The fourth one is forecast at the appropriate level of aggregation. Increase aggregation level and it increases the uh, accuracy, decrease, um, plan on stock keeping units. It also in, uh, decreases your accuracy. And the fifth one is establishing performance and error measures for the forecast. As you see, this basic approach 
is a summary of all what we had in earlier slides. Um, as we focus in this uh, chapter on time se uh, series forecasting methods, we got three, um, uh, uh, three ways to calculate the systematic component. Please recall the systematic component consists of level, trend and seasonal factors. We have the multiplicative, the additive and the mixed way of calculating the systematic component. Um, we have um, uh, multiple uh, ways of, um, of establishing the demand forecast. One of the ways is um, uh, uh, static methods. It works with statistics. Uh, the other one is adaptive, and those both series we will cross in the further um, in the further videos. So in the further videos we will work on uh, ways on how to establish those forecasts. <coughs>